Hi, I'm Sarah of Sarah Wing Intuitive Arts, and happy fall, happy transitional time today. If you are coming across my videos for the first time, I make uh, storytelling videos. I talk about different empathic intuitive subject matter. I do uh, use oracle cards and tarot. Today I'm going to talk about transition and new life and fall, but I'm also doing a pick a card. So if you want to go straight to that, you can look at the timestamps in the comments below or in the description below. But yeah, I just wanted to kind of talk about this transition into different weather, but also into the new lives that we've all been building for ourselves. And oh, I know that for many of us, there has been a lot of surprising change. Um, some of it as we view as positive or some of it that we view as negative, but definitely change. And a lot of uncovering and reclaiming of parts of ourself, a lot of reinvention um, or updates of personal beliefs that just don't work anymore. But I know that this has been coming for some of us. Um, maybe it's been a path of a few years and you kind of feel like you've been like drudging and digging those trenches and you've got a pretty good pathway now, let's say, or it's come up sporadically maybe. Um, but they've all been these big kind of sprinklers of information and self-knowledge that are feeding you, um, that you're ready for. But I feel like regardless of which description fits you most, or if it's kind of part one, part the other, somewhere in between that a lot of us are just in this place where it's like <laughs> we built the sandbox, we brought all our toys, we probably have a little guest list who we want to play with in our sandbox, but we haven't quite, I don't know why this is coming up like this, but we haven't quite cut the ribbon and um, invited people in or uh, maybe allowed ourselves to play in that sandbox yet. So I feel like all the pieces are there, but for a lot of us, we either haven't taken that final step or there's a hesitation to maybe finalize that, that guest list, uh, which could just mean a lot of transition about um, who we're inviting into our lives um, and who we're not. So <laughs> I've already filmed the pick a cards, which are fun. They're fun little ones. But what I noticed is these big life themes definitely came through in the piles today. No surprise because it's that collective energy out there. So I thought I'd just talk a little bit and I wanted to, before the pick a card, actually draw um, draw a card and draw some charms and see how that can inform this time that I'm speaking of. I like to point out, uh, different jewelry when I'm wearing, wearing things. So I have these, they're supposed to be climbers, but for me, they look like they remind me of, um, Archangel Raphael. Um, so whatever that, uh, medicinal, swiggle with the snake and the staff right like on medical I don't I can't remember the name of it but it reminds me of that 
It reminds me of that, and that reminds me of Archangel Raphael, who is a healer. So I'm bringing in this healer energy, um, and maybe just that part of me that identifies more as a healer uh, for myself, not just others. And then um, this lovely new necklace, which honestly just made me smile and made me, it just made me happy. And it does look like a fun little cosmic, you know, it's a little cosmic, uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it makes me smile because it looks like something, I don't know, it just looks happy. And, um, it's got, it's got this little character here, which I see as a flying little fairy surrounded by stars, um, it's actually an astrological necklace, and uh, it's for the sign of Virgo, which is not uh, my sun sign, but, um, you know, we all have every sign in our chart. But I, this just made me smile. I thought this was, like, such a happy, happy, sparkly thing, and this made me think of, like, a little fairy um, this little flying fairy. So I'm going with it. And, uh, because I'm wearing those, because, especially because I'm wearing this, I brought out my little moon, my adjustable little, uh, moon and opal ring. So I just bring those up. I like to, to just kind of spark things in your mind or imagination. And, um, you know, who knows? Just inform, just inform and spark some ideas. So I'm just gonna draw a card from Rebecca Campbell's deck, um, Work the Light Oracle Cards. More pretty, warm, yummy pink colors in here. I've got some pink and rosy colors on my eyes, pinky colors in the background here. So, I don't know, like, yeah, because I said the, the sandbox things, uh, I'm wondering if there's going to be an element of play that comes up um, as kind of just a suggestion of, I feel like so many of us are about to take a leap. And even, in, and I just want you to think about this, because if you've been trudging along and working on something for a while, or it feels like transition after transition, um, know that there are breaths that you have to take. There are pauses you you are taking, um, whether you acknowledge them or not, in between these steps. <sighs> I love it. So as I'm speaking about pauses in between steps, so if you're in between transitions or in between, uh, consciously you can think of what's this next thing I have to leap into? Time to pause. Look at this. Okay, this card says, no. No. <laughs> Wait, postpone, pause, say no. So I think this is a reminder then, like I was saying, to breathe. I, I really need to consciously ground myself and remind myself to breathe a lot of the time. I'm better about not holding my breath, but I think uh, that was something that I did so often. That outside of um, like being in nature, being in surroundings where like the earth and nature, it speaks to you in its breath and you can't help but respond back naturally. But I think a lot of times, um, more so than I do now, but for so much of my life, I feel like I was holding my breath, holding my breath and probably like also like sucking my stomach in, which I don't, I don't think there's ever a point in my life where I was sucking my stomach in that I had a stomach. That's also sub a sacral solar sorry solar plexus work there so that just came up so if any of you are that resonates with any of you um 
just know that I think I spent about 10 or so years probably just on the solar um, solar plexus like majorly doing uh, work consciously unconsciously mostly unconsciously reflecting back on it now so in this next transition um, or the next step you need to take this is just some just a thought you know slight encouragement <laughs> big thunderbolts <laughs> No, wait, postpone, pause, say no. So this could even be, maybe you know you need to take a pause and you know that this next leap is so important. And maybe the no is take saying, don't take time to do things like to get, you know, to, to do those things for other people. Take some time to do for yourself or If you do need time to kind of clear your mind and you want to make like a very conscious, clear decision about something, this is just saying, choose, you know, choose who, who you're adding to this pot that's stirring in your mind, you know, this cauldron of thoughts. If you're already feeling like it's one more thing or you know you're somebody who can only take on this or that before you come become too overwhelmed just be conscious of who you're letting in even if it's like you need to make a decision and somebody's offering um help but you know if you take their help or you take their suggestions it's really you always feel like you're doing them a favor. Like it's not, it's just going to add steps to what you already need to do or take away from the time that you could be spending on yourself. So if any of that resonates, so let's get, we can do a little more uplifting card, right? So how do we, how should we think about this little sandbox we built? We've got the, I'm sticking with sandbox. We have this lovely sandbox we built, filled it with sand. We've got all the toys. We've got a little list of people to come in. And we've got this little rope around. We haven't cut it for the grand opening. So how, just a way to think about this new arena of our life that we're about to play in. Okay. Okay. So this is mirror. It says who or what is triggering you. So if you take away other people and you're looking just at yourself and you're thinking about, so let's say you're about to step into, this is the new place you're going to play, okay? And if you don't like the sandbox metaphor, we can go with this little lake. You put together this little man-made lake and you're about to go to, for a swim that you're just about to tap your finger in. So how do we want to think about this? What's coming up that's triggering you? What are the, you know, what are the negative things that are coming up in your mind? And it's okay. Everything that you think has a purpose. Everything has a purpose. So what are, you know, what are these things that may be rattling around in your head? And, you know, one suggestion, you write them out. You go, okay, these are the, these things that are rattling around in my head. And you could think, all right, do I want to take, you know, um, anxiety into this beautiful, think of the next uh, transition in your life, this next place to play in in your life is this pristine pool or a yet to be plated sandbox, whatever, whatever works for you. Now, do you want to, if it's a pristine pool, do you want to splash in with anxiety? Probably not, you know, um, because you want to remember that, you know, you're there to splash and there to play and not worry, you know, you're not, you're not there to drown. You really are there because you built yourself this space, this new place to play in, in your life. Um, or if it's a sandbox, you know, you're, you know, the anxiety, it's like, you're not going to get dirty. You're not going to mess up 
your clothes, like mess something up. You know, you're there to make new shapes and try out new shapes, right? Try out new forms, packing these new things into your life. Um, and one thing, if you, if you're thinking about these next steps and you just can't stop thinking about them, yeah, writing out maybe these negative things and then write the opposite next to it. So, you know, um, instead of anxiety, you know, excitement, just there's this beautiful balance going on at all times, this ebb and flow. In life, we have erosion and renewal. We have this rebirth that's constantly happening. So when you're, you know, it's, think of it like this little, this little play back and forth. When you're full of anxiety and when you're working through anxiety, there is a part of you at the same, at the same same uh, same time that's actually cultivating excitement. It's just that to get you there, you're digging through one. And as you dig through this one state of mind, this one emotion, as silly as it may seem, it's actually helping carve and cultivate and open up this window to its opposite. Okay? And it's just it's just something that is this lovely little thing the universe does. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but <laughs> when you step into a state that we see as positive, you know, or on some abundant state, you ever notice that so often um, you can really just step right into it and there isn't a lot of, you know, there isn't a lot of hesitation. You just kind of go into this state. You ever notice that? You ever notice that? Sometimes it is because you've spent time kind of just trudging through, grinding through, working through, and really integrating and having a, an understanding of its opposite, of anxiety. You kind of get to know, cozy up to anxiety a little, go, I know you're here. I get it. If you're hanging around, you're, you're here. You're welcome to be here as long as you need to be, you know. And saying something like that doesn't make it true. You could say a million things. It doesn't mean a million things are going to happen in that moment. And kind of, you know. You've, you've been spending enough time with one that amazingly enough, part of that, it's like this beautiful teeter-totter, you know? At a certain point, when you're carving through and working through, say, anxiety on one end, and you're working and you're working and you're working and you're walking it closer and closer and closer or integrating more and more, understanding more and more, and it starts to lift up, Right? It's weighing a lot. It's not weighing as much. And suddenly, what, what falls down is the exact opposite. And there's this excitement that hits. I hope that kind of made sense. Because um, I was trying to mix metaphors and an explanation. But, yeah. So, just a way to think about it. Um, as we step into something new. I just, I just want to say that to say, don't be put off by, don't be put off by any negative thoughts. Negative thoughts are going to come. Um, you're a living, breathing human being. It's, it's a, it's a part of life, but so is joy and excitement and everything else. And, you know, you can't have one without the other. And I promise you that. So I'm just going to grab... A little charm, or 68 charms, my god. All right, why not? All right, I'll go really quick. Okay, for the new chapter in your life, 
we have this goat, which makes me think of Capricorn, which makes me think of leader. Goats can climb almost straight, like straight up a up a wall. Um, and, you know, there's jokes aplenty for them being able to eat almost anything. So basically, there is nothing you cannot surmount. There is nothing you will not make and make it over, you know, over that next hurdle. You've got this. Um, this is, to me, I'm just like a promise. Promise is what first came through. So, um, kind of check in with what you've promised yourself and if the promises you've made to yourself or to others still hold up, knowing your life now and who you are or who you want to be, can you still hold promises or are you holding on to promises that are outdated? Armor. Uh, this is a boundary thing. Only you can violate your boundaries, okay? I'm not talking about assault or anything like that, um, but setting up daily personal boundaries. Check out your boundaries. And are you waiting on others to not violate them? Or again, not talking about anything with assault, but are you waiting on others to stop violating them? Or are you responsible and checking any time that you do not hold up your boundaries that you set. And the final one, carnelian. So, shaped like a pumpkin. I got this many years ago from a friend, and um, it's not something I would typically pick out myself because it looks like a candy. And I tend not to buy crystals that look like a candy because it makes me want to eat them. And I don't have... Uh, that condition where I actually will eat objects like that, but um, that's why it goes in a charm bag Because otherwise I would just stare at it like it's a yummy yummy candy So sweetness of life sweet things are coming. It's full The pumpkin is also a promise. So it's a promise of um, Pumpkins uh, make me think of a card from Mother Peace Tarot where it's about pregnancy and it's saying you don't know. You know you're growing something. You have these intentions. You have the seeds planted. You've done the initial work. You are growing something. But don't put a date on this. You don't know. You don't know when this is going to come to fruition, okay? There are certain things you control, certain things you don't. You don't know when things are going to bloom and blossom and come to be. But there is a promise here. There's a promise that, yes, something new is birthing. And you are birthing it. So you're birthing probably a new life, probably a new version of yourself. Um, and at the very least, it's saying, you know, a sweeter life is headed your way. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, wherever you are in the world, oh, I hope you're embracing this change of weather, meaning taking care of yourself and doing what you need to do. And um, if you stick around, check out the pick card, pick one, pick two. Um, I'd love to hear any comments you have and let me know how this video or how the cards, the pick a card resonated for you. Until next time, you're beautiful, you are loved effortlessly, infinitely, and blessed, blessed, happy Halloween, happy All Hallows Eve, happy fall. Blessed be. So for the first pile, we have a ghost pumpkin. Kind of take a moment, see if you're feeling that. And for the second pile, we have a wizard pumpkin. See if you're feeling that pile. It doesn't have to be a ghost pumpkin. It could be an angel pumpkin. It could be whatever interpretation, but if you're drawn more to pile, uh, pile one, this could be sorcerer, wizard. This could really be any, or pile two. Okay. Have this pumpkin here, and it also has like 
two stars, so if you're a numbers person. And there are five stars on this one. Okay, so make your choice, whichever resonates more. Okay, so for pile number one, all right. All right, the frog princess. We have autonomy. We have from the traditional tarot, the four of ghosts, the hierophant, and the four of imps. So already what I'm seeing is a theme of transformation, definitely. Um, theme of discovery, definitely some relationship aspects. So for the four of ghosts, kind of think about this like, <laughs> um, kind of memories, memories circulating, coming up, like the chatter here is memories. So maybe some old baggage. And then with the hair font, so this is being in a position where you're representing. So you're representing a lot of maybe um, traditions, uh, conforming to certain expectations. So there's a lot of the past going on here. And this card is really saying to listen. It's speaking about listening to others. Um, and it's not really saying to uh, solely trust yourself. But what I notice here is the cards almost transform the way they came out. So you have autonomy here. And this really is about um, trusting yourself. This really is about finding success in your own beliefs and um, not wasting energy or living your life through um, the lens of other people's projections onto you. Um, it is about a celebration of your emotions and guidance through them. You know, um, we have the chariot symbolized here. It really is about this conquering success um, of, of championing for yourself. You know, you are this champion here. And the imps here, the four of imps, we have again this celebration, this like lovely celebration, uh, revelry going on. So I'm kind of getting the story of there was a big transformation in, in terms of um, really who you are, or possibly if this is romantic, who you're choosing. So this could be a new beginning or an ending, ending of um, this type of patterns. Um, so old baggage or conformity, like a change in old patterns to break through and become yourself and embracing that. And think about this in terms of, um, really, you know, um, transformation on one hand, you know, you kiss the frog and they turn into a prince. Well, if you just thought a frog's a frog. And all I'm ever going to be is a frog and I have to act in accordance with the ways of being a frog and conform to the roles of being a frog or, you know, I can never transform into, let's say, this, this other archetype, this other person or the person that uh, you want to become or maybe the person you want to be with does not conform to these expectations that you held for yourself or your past experiences or your society or family um, has for you. But then I love, one thing I notice is, so look at the way that the Hierophant is holding their staff here. Okay. And you kind of see the body language here. They're kind of, you know, pigeon toed, kind of 
I mean, they're wrapped up, okay? They're really wrapped up and they're stuffed in that seat. They're not going anywhere. Compare it to this. Autonomy. Look how bravely and boldly you stand here. You're proudly holding your staff, but your staff is not your place of power. Clearly, it's you. You're illuminated. You have sun on, the sun on your chest and you are riding high. You're riding into the nebula. Um, you are soaring. And you have this beautiful... Or this other transition, think of like the staffs of these trees. They're supporting and holding you as you go through this phase of um, taking your internalized baggage to bring it out, to have that conversation you need to have with yourself or others, to integrate it so that that tree here that supported you during your contemplation um, and maybe even a dark night of the soul has now revealed and transformed itself into this beautiful revelry and celebration. Um, again, if this is romantic, then here we have this beautiful acknowledgement of you being with the type of partner that you want to be with. Or you transforming into the type of um, transforming into the type of person you want to be, meaning um, not somebody kind of sardined and stuffed back in the can here, <laughs> you know, uh, and just listening to the wisdom of the past, but somebody who has risen through their own self awareness and is just really going for it. I mean, to the nebula, to the nebulas. And because of that, there is a recognition. I feel like this is even if it's just you who recognizes how much it took to feel this free. So if you're, if you're drawn to um, this ghosty here, I would say kind of, kind of consider where you are right now. Where are you in terms of big transitions and to kind of step in and complete those transitions? What, What's left for you to do? Um, are you still involving yourself with people who are letting you know that they expect and demand you to be a certain role for them? And if so, think about if those relationships, the sustainability of those relationships and can you take them into this new place with you where you're more yourself, you're more, um, you're more out in the world, you're more seen, um, your transformation, you know, I just, this is success. So if you're worried about how do I get from here to here, look at this beautiful, it's not just successful, it's, you know, it's sparkling out to the cosmos, the recognition is as above, so below. So um, I just say that as words of encouragement, if this pile resonated with you. Okay, and I'm going to move on to pile number two. Okay, so for pile number two, we have the delicate fairy and her ferrets, the truth aura card, the knight of pumpkins, king of imps, and ten of ghosts. So like pile one, I really feel like this is a story in two parts that starts with these cards right here and takes us over here. And I just love how, as I lay them out, it sometimes just the way you lay cards out, the story starts to unfold um, in a very physical way. I love that. So looking at, um, so we have, the Knight of Pumpkins. So this is like Earth, and this is the slowest moving of the Knights. This is endurance and patience, okay? And he is facing, which I think it's interesting they're facing each other, the King of Imps. So this is a very fiery energy. This is fast moving, um, almost impulsive, um, uh, just leaping, going for it, uh, just making these moves, these advances. 
And I, so I can also, I already see, so these seem like a bit of a contrast. You can see he's almost like pushing himself off of his chair. And, uh, you know, he's just like at the slowest pace. It's a bit of a contrast, right? As they face each other. So you might be feeling this, like your, your gears in life are either coming to what feels like a bit of a sticky halt or perhaps they are just like the engine is revving and things are moving really fast. So the delicate fairy and her ferrets actually speaks to exactly this. Sometimes in life, things are going to be requiring uh, longer commitments, more endurance, um, just more of a, you might feel like you're drudging through life a bit. And then other times it's almost uh, magically quick or boom, you need to act on things so, so fast, faster than you have in the past. And in part, this card is talking about the fact that life is going to give you both. It's not just going to go at one speed or another. Um, it's, it's not a face off between the two, you know, it's, it's going to ebb and flow and the wisdom in that. But as you can see, she's with these beautiful ferrets, uh, meaning either one can take a toll, either one you're going to be growing and learning through, and it can be a lot. So it's also talking about having these companions who are going to have your back, having companions who, while you are, you know, scratching your head, they are scratching out a path, um, for you to stumble or walk or run on and kind of announcing that if you don't have anyone like this in your life, bringing people like this in or people coming in uh, naturally into your life to help you through, let's say, an abrupt change in the kind of transition uh, you're going through right now. And so we take this over here, you know, this beautiful truth aura card and the Ten of Ghosts. So overall, you can probably see this very loving, happy energy. And in part, what I want to highlight here is, so this card, the truth. So when it couples with the transition from this card to this card, when you're going through these changes, you can't pigeonhole yourself to one belief that's going to work through the ebbs and flows of your life. Your beliefs are going to change. They're going to evolve. They're going to adapt as you learn more about yourself. And the truth that is highlighted in this card is the truth of the inner child. Okay, so it's looking at and finding the joy that you found that was there before it was uh, buried by life, by society, by your upbringing. Bringering? And it's interesting because this card specifically denotes this, um, this, this inner child work and it speaks to this a beautiful white cloak surrounding and embracing this aura and talking about how the things that get suppressed um, turning into, interestingly enough, of course, um, this kind of darker cloak and the representation meaning this shadow work. So kind of this transition of working with the shadow, doing the shadow work to reveal more of this bright light of your divine child self. And I think what this is leading to, like, I feel like 
all these little ghosties are going to be treasured pieces of you, treasured memories, treasured interests, treasured joys from when you were a child that, you know, have gotten buried. Um, I do, because this has come up in this reading, I do want to note again the five stars, just in case the number five uh, resonates with you as like age five or maybe five years ago something happened maybe you started doing some shadow work or maybe um if not shadow work uh, maybe there was something that triggered some memories uh around childhood and this could be an encouragement to say you're this bright, glowing, beautiful, inherently worthy, ever evolving in your truth, um, you know, human being. And you absolutely have every right. And if you feel so called, owe it to yourself to dive in and find all of these parts of from when you were young. And instead of, you know, containing them still, suppressing them and putting them under this cloak uh, where, where we call, you know, where we look for our shadow work, going in and then illuminating them, you know, having them hung proudly to look at. And this could be, you know, stages of, of growth of yourself from when you were younger and getting older and older and being able to proudly look at these aspects of your divine self. Again, this speaks, um, this card does specifically talk about um, your inner child. So this could be certain interests you suppress, or it could be certain ways you, you cope to um, continue to belong to your family. But when you pull them up, you see, here is you as an adult, now bravely taking a look behind that cloak and remembering just how beautiful you are for this reason, that reason, just holding them up to this light and starting, you know, to engage with and celebrate these beautiful, beautiful aspects of yourself at every age. And that's, I mean, that's what I'm seeing here. Um, but I'm definitely getting, I mean, when I even see these ferrets here, uh, they make me think of stuffed animals. So I'm definitely getting this encouragement and inspiration to go ahead and, you know, pull back the cloak because this is what you're going to find. This is the heart of it. You know, it, 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 you know, sometimes you can be very fearful about what you're going to find. And it can feel like sometimes if you look at a certain part of yourself or parts of yourself, it can feel like death sometimes. It can, you know, integration can feel like a massive depression um, at times. But but the truth is this this is really what's underneath. And when you hold that up, you have... You have nothing, nothing but celebration left because the truth of who you are should be illuminated and celebrated. The experiences you have, they provide you with lessons. They provide you with stepping stones. They provide you with ammunition. They provide you with so many things. But the truth of who you are is really this beautiful illuminated heart. And again, if you are doing kind of some of this work that can be a little more exhaustive, um, if you have people you know or services you know to recruit and bring on board to support you during this time, great. Otherwise, I would say just keep an open heart and mind and expect and and hope 
for these type of people to enter your life. And if you are looking inward, you will recognize them um, in part by this inner child. So I think your inner child, the parts of you that want to be illuminated, that were suppressed, are going to recognize these new people. There's going to be part of your divine inner child. The parts that have been suppressed that want illumination now to be free in your adulthood. They're going to recognize these, these partnerships. But um, so best of luck with that journey. It's an ever evolving one. You cannot do it wrong. Um, and just maybe hold one of these images in your heart. This beautiful understanding person, whether you're there or not, just looking at your inner child and just praising them lovingly or touching your heart right now and imagining a beautiful white light flowing out, knowing that that's your divine self, um, which deserves all the love in the world.